But here's some information from the Indiana High School Athletic Association. Six easy ways to become an MVP. And by MVP, we mean most valuable parent. Like all of us, the parents of high school athletes tend to protect their children from adversity or they overly involve themselves by advocating for their success. But when they do, they're negating the value of participating in high school sports. Among other lessons, high school sports teach teenagers to take nothing for granted, how to overcome obstacles, and that an extraordinary commitment of time and effort is required in order to reach goals and experience achievement. High school sports also encourage independence and self-sufficiency, attributes that are needed to be successful in life. It's natural for parents to love their children, and it's important to support them in as many ways as possible. With this in mind, here are six easy ways that you can be the MVP of your child's high school team. Number one, attend your children's games as often as possible. Nothing demonstrates interest and involvement more than being there. And be sure to invite grandma and grandpa to come along with you. Number two, cheer for all the kids on the team, not just your own. Here's a test for you. Do you know all the players on your child's team? Could you say hello to them by their first name? Embracing the entire team is a great way to show that your interest is sincere. Number three, be a resource for your child's team. Does a teammate need help with transportation? Is the team trying to raise money for new uniforms? Is someone needed to organize a pizza party before the tournament starts? Maybe you can help. Number four, try not to criticize the coach or the officials in front of your child. Hey, you're human. And there may be times when you need to vent. But be careful when and to whom you do it. Criticizing the coaching staff undermines its credibility and tends to put your child in the middle. And games are seldom won or lost because of an official's call. Remember, coaches and officials are objective. Most parents are not. Empower your child to talk with the coach about concerns. Everybody wants more playing time and understandably so. But encourage your children to have that conversation with their coaches instead of you doing it for them. Giving teenagers the confidence and conviction to speak up for themselves is one of the greatest benefits of participating in high school sports. Number six, focus on the life lessons your children are learning, not on win-loss records or how many points they're scoring. According to the NC2A, only about 2% of all high school athletes win a sports scholarship, and the average value of it is less than $11,000. But every child will benefit from the lessons they've learned as a result of participating in high school sports for the rest of their lives. It's difficult being the parent of a high school athlete. There's far more emotion and social pressure involved than is ideal. But if you follow these six pointers, not only will your children love and respect you, but so will their teammates and coaches. And you might even be named MVP. Thank you for your support of high school athletics in Indiana. Stay tuned now. The Indiana SRN game is next. Indiana SRN, where you're always in the game. Wonderful jazz for Indiana. We are here in Jasper High School's gymnasium as we get set for a class 1i semi-state matinee that's going to be an absolute beauty. We've got the number one ranked Lagodi Lions coming in at 25 and 2, taking on Greenwood Christian Academy, ranked number 8 at 23 and 5. It's going to be a fantastic ball game this afternoon. The first of two here from Jasper High School. You're going to be thoroughly in, uh, 
enjoying this basketball tonight. These two squads are looking for their first trip to the state finals at Bankers Life Fieldhouse next weekend. You can see the Lagodi fans behind me. They are embracing their wonderful hickness as they've got, as they told me, they're embracing it. They got a great crowd on hand. Greenwood Christians on the other hand, we've got basketball for you right here on Indian SRN coming up. It's 1A semi-state. Number one versus number eight. You're watching right now. The movie script fits the bill. Every no, everyone knows how it goes, you know. The pregame locker room speech by Hickory coach Norman Dale. There's a condition in tournament play to not talk about the next step until you've climbed the one in front of you. And that's exactly what the Greenwood Christian Academy Cougars have done this season. One step at a time. And good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another exclusive internet sports broadcast presentation of this, the 45th annual IHSA Girls Basketball State Tournament. Today, here at Jasper High School, where the Class 1A Cougars, number eight in the state, and in the semi-state, take on the final four challenge of the top-ranked Lagudi Lions. Steve McClure, along with Jean Carl, our pregame show is brought to you by College Hunks and Movers. We can move anything at any time. Call 317-739-4262. One step away from a trip to Bankers Life Fieldhouse in downtown Indianapolis and a chance at a state championship set for next Saturday as things roll on. The upstart Cougars, who observers say a team that no one wants to play in this afternoon's matchup, sporting a record school setting record that is of 23 and only five defeats. GCA winners of 13 straight have back-to-back -back sectional titles in their back pocket and an even regional championship their first not daunted by the top ranked Lions even with Lagodi and its home crowd just a short 20 miles away from Jasper. Let's bring in my broadcast partner Sean Carl now and let him set the table even further for today's Class 1A semi-state. How are you, my friend? I am doing excellent. How are you? It Good. was quite the trip up the stairs after that. Oh, you made it up in the I stairs. Did. And did. Uh, we have our got ourselves a tremendous matchup today between a team that I think Lagodi doesn't want to have to face because this has been the scenario, Sean, that GCA has gone through the entire season. It, it has been. And, you know, you look at the, the daunting task, as some people would say, but these girls are unafraid. We saw them as they came in the building. They are loose, but they're also excited. They know it's at stake, but they also know what they have to do and what roles they have to play. They were ready to play basketball. They wanted to get out here and play as soon as they got here. This is going to be a great basketball game. Greenwood Christian Academy, certainly only a member of the IHSA, Sean, for 12 years. That's it. And I was there when they began their program and only played about four or five games in those non-IHSA uh, competitions. But, boy, they have come a long way. They, they have. And Coach Allen Weems got his 100th win this year. He's at 115 right now. He's built a great program. Uh, folks, I am telling you, if you have not seen Izzy Reed play, <laughs> you are in for a treat. She went 20-12 and 26-12 and 26 and 12 in the regional. This girl is leader for Miss Basketball next year. And she's an 84% free throw shooter, and she gets to the line a lot because she drives the basketball and will penetrate the lanes very easily. But, uh, Sean, her motor never turns off. It does not. And you'll look at her and you'll say, man, she's so red. But well, that, That's fine. <laughs> she, she has an extra gear, and she knows when to put it in that extra gear when they need it. But don't overlook Alexis Mead and Savannah Fry. There are two other scores great shooters they try and double down on reed those girls are going to knock them down in talking with head coach brian smith who is in his fifth season at lagodi he is certainly very aware of the fact that gca not only has 
Izzy Reed, but they have three other uh, players that they're gonna have to keep an eye on because all of those are in double figures. They, yes, they are. And Lagodi is number one, Steve, and do not start a single senior, according to my numbers, if, if that's correct from the information that we got. And Lagodi only had one loss before the Christmas holidays. That came to Columbus East at a Class 4A team. But when you look at this team from top to bottom, and they, Sean, will only play about seven players, two off the bench, but a very experienced team they have in the two uh, Van Hoy sisters. Mm -hmm. they, they like to play a lot of perimeter basketball and will stay outside the three-point line. So that tells you a little bit about their offense. And, th and they need to really place an importance on rebounding because as we've seen, Greenwood Christian crashes the boards, especially Reed and Odell. They do a great job with that. And interestingly enough, Lagodi's other loss was to a team that's playing in game two, exactly. Linton Stockton. Exactly. We saw Greenwood Christian Academy, obviously, here on Indiana SRN just a week ago on Saturday over at Southwestern High School in Shelby County. And in both of those games, especially in that game with Jacksonville, they had to come all the way back from 12 points. They did. They're not They're not afraid to, head, to get down early because they know they can come back. We're going to take a break. Come back and join us here on Indiana SRN. How does a good man become even better? By working out? or by working his way up the corporate ladder. By changing his diet, or by changing his style. By traveling the world, or by staying perfectly still. For 300 years, we've helped good men become the best versions of themselves through a dedicated fraternity and by taking an oath to live a life of integrity, service, and brotherly love. Men who are as committed to each other and their families as they are to our noble cause. In the end, we don't just make men better, we make them Masons. Not just a man, a Mason. And welcome back, everyone. Steve McClure along with Sean Kroll reporting to you live from Jasper High School in southern Indiana as we get you set for this Class 1A IHSA Girls Basketball Semi-State between the Greenwood Christian Academy Cougars who come into today's game with a record of 23-5 and five, going up against Lagodi. In today's fast-moving business world, effectively marketing your company takes hard work, creativity, and the right team. With over 40 years of experience, PIP has been enabling companies large and small to find success in achieving their business objectives. We understand the challenges our clients face. That's why we have a variety of print solutions suited to fit your every need. Whatever your printing request may be, from a quick turnaround on a company brochure for an upcoming trade show, a direct mail piece that needs to be designed, printed, and mailed, to complex marketing projects, PIP is sure to have the right print solution for you. Nothing grabs attention like a well-crafted sign. It can transform virtually any surface into an eye-catching experience, boosting your marketing appeal from banners, posters, floor graphics, and window decals, to wayfinding and yard signs. We not only help with sign design and getting it installed, we also integrate them into your overall marketing strategy, designed to help you win. PIP also provides best-in-class integrated marketing solutions to help you make the most out of your next campaign. Our approach to marketing ensures that your strategy is seamlessly executed across all media, online and offline, so your business always looks its best. At PIP, we understand it takes a team to achieve business growth, and that's why we're here to help. Get to know PIP and let us make your world a better place. Moments away from our opening tip here at Jasper High School in Southern Indiana. Thanks for joining us here on Indiana SRN. 
for this Class 1A IHSA Girls Basketball Semi-State Championship between Greenwood Christian Academy and the Lagodi Lions. Let's take a look at our starting lineups for tonight's game. First for the visitors, the Greenwood Christian Academy Cougars coming in at 23 and five. Starting at one forward, a 5'9 junior, number 12 in Izzy Reed. At the other forward spot, a 5'10 sophomore, number 15, Dory Odell. At one guard, 5'9 junior, number 23 in Savannah Fry. A second guard spot, a 5'7 sophomore, number one in Ellie Bigelow. And at the third guard position, the lone senior on this GCA Cougars team, a 5'9 senior, number 21 in Alexis Mead. The Cougars are led in scoring by Izzy Reed, averaging 24 points per contest. Let's take a look now at the Lagodi Lions starting lineup that will be coached by Brian Smith. Starting at one forward, a 5'9 junior, number 32, Mackenzie Van Hoy. At the other forward spot, a 5'9 junior, number two, Isabel Wagner. At one guard, a 5'8 junior, number 15 in Brooklyn Jones. One guard, a 5'9 sophomore, number 23 in Kylie Van Hoy. And at the second guard position, a 5'9 junior, number one in Kalia Fleming. Again, the Lions coached by Brian Smith, now in his fifth season with Lagoti. Good crowd on hand, Sean Carl, and uh, we're just about set. It is fantastic crowd here. Steve, the lower bowl is entirely filled and people have spilled up into the upper bowls in this fantastic gymnasium. My first trip to Jasper, and this is a beautiful facility. The anticipation of entering this game today, Sean, especially for the Greenwood Christian Academy Cougars being their first time entry into a semi-state, you can imagine what their week has been like. Oh, I imagine the school week has been amazing for both these schools, to, to be honest with you. You know, everybody lauding them and saying, oh, here we go, it's time to go to semi-state. I'm sure a lot of the Greenwood Christian folks dreaded the drive down here, but I'll tell you what, they brought out a good crowd. They're ready to cheer on their Lady Cougars as our little Lagodi Lions in their cowboy outfits, so to speak. <laughs> the business-like approach that both of these coaches have taken this week has been very interesting. Uh, just to uh, highlight the profile of what they did this week, Sean, is the fact that they cut back on practice time to make sure that they've got their legs for this important contest today. Trying to keep things very pre fresh and not that grind through routine every single day. You, you want that grind, especially in sectional, where you're going to play so many games in a short period of time. But once you hit regional, where they play two games in one day, but semi state, it's one game for that day. You want to have it so that you leave everything out on the court. And the technology and the nutrition and rest and everything, they know that so well is they're, they're gearing these athletes to be ready for this game, as will the winner for next week. And, and basically, you know, what both teams are trying to do is just keep the mood as light as possible so that when they step on the floor right now, they're ready to roll. You and I are both huge baseball fans, <laughs> Steve. You don't want to grip the bat too hard because you're not going to get your best swing. You want to have some sort of relaxation. The Lagodi Lions, dressed in white, has possession of the first tip. And a Gurdon GCA dressed in there underneath the basket all alone. Up and in is Mackenzie Glen Hoy. And the Lions have taken their first lead. Nobody was there, Sean. Well, they, they left her wide open, lost her on the back side. Here is Alexis Mead down to Dory Odell. Here's Izzy inside the glass and up and in. Boy, if they let her get that position down in the post, it's gonna be a long night. Yeah, she'll set up on the high post and then dart their way right down underneath the basket as we watch the Lions come forward. And again, in that perimeter offense set up, miss on the outside, pulled down there by Savannah Fry and Alexis Mead will cross the 10 second line. Oh. And here's Dory Odell all alone. Misses the inside shot. And Izzy Ray with a bat, the offensive rebound will get to the line. I'm going to say this as lovingly as I can. She is an animal on the glass. <laughs> if you do not box her out, she will get that rebound every time. And lucky for Dor Dorothy Odell, she was because she missed that bunny, but now Izzy gets two. Now watch this form of Izzy Odell. Each and every time, it's exactly the same. 
up in the air and no good on the first try. Again, she is an 84% free throw shooter on the season. One of the best in the state of Indiana. Is that an announcer jinx that just yeah, happened? Yeah, I believe it is, <laughs> but watch this, he put this one in. It's about repetition. Exactly. Second one on its way, up and nothing but net. And the GCA Cougars have a three to two lead with seven minutes remaining here in the first quarter of play. Thanks for joining us here on Indiana SRN. I like this pressure they're showing, try and force eight second calls there it and is. turnovers. It's a read along with Alexis Mead on the layup, up and in, give the assist to Izzy Reed. And it's a five to two lead in favor of the Cougars. Great job there on the passing from Izzy Reed after the turnover. Lions set up way outside and handling on the point is Kalia Fleming. Six and a half minutes remaining here in the first quarter of play. Thanks for spending part of your afternoon with us. Inside they go, and a hand on it on the defense was Izzy Reed. You can see the pressure here caused the trying to get behind the back loss of the basketball. Reed got it, but a great outlet pass to Mead for the bucket. Underneath their own basket. Shot on the way up and in, no, by Mackenzie McCoy. And the Cougars have the rebound. Up on top is Alexis Mead. Now to Izzy, coming back out to all. Savannah Fry, left side with three on the way by, it's by Mead, no good. Quickly up court, the Lions with the basketball. This is McKenzie Van Hoy, shot in the air, no good. Rebound by Izzy Reed. She's pinched there, and the ball stolen. Coming right back, on its way, misses wow. on the layup. On the, right there in front of the basket, Kylie Van Hoy. And it is Izzy Reed down the lane, can't get it to go. Who's got the basketball? Two on the floor, three on the floor, and a tie up. Uh, I would think we're seeing a little nerves here early, Steve. Some easy buckets underneath within two to three feet being missed. Got too much power in the hands it, when you it, go to that basket. Yeah, when, when, did, when did they relax and get <laughs> in the flow of the game? I think the defense, early pressure from Greenwood Christians thrown off Lagodi. Two and a half minutes elapsed here in the first quarter of play and GCA with a five to two lead here at Jasper High School. Izzy Reed with the left hand and I think she's gonna be, no, they're gonna call a travel against Izzy, so the turnover will give the ball right back to the Lions. Tried to switch hands and it cost her there with the travel, but getting inside the post with the dribble drive helps. And you see the past two defensive players up front as the Lions come forward. That's Izzy Reed along with Alexis Mead. The Mead and Reed show, you might say. <laughs> I like it. Down in the corner, shot on the way, no good there by Brooklyn Jones. Rebound, and still on another miss. Van Hoy with the miss and the pull down by Dory Odell. Wow, Lagodi is, is gonna. Here's a ball taken right back by the Lions. Two on one break. Good bounce pass in there. Miss on the put back, put up and in. And she's gonna get to the line. Wow. That's Fleming was there for the for the putback, but boy, so many misses. Lagodi's gonna look back at this film if they don't advance and just kick themselves for these chances they've missed down low. This foul will go against Savannah Fry, her first team foul number one against GCA. We're looking for our 500 subscriber on YouTube. Ball is up in the air and good for a $50 gift certificate at Aspen Creek Grill and Fishers. Subscribe today and never miss another game. Five to five, all knotted for the first time. Savannah Fry looking inside for Izzy. Here's another three coming your way and you can bury that one by Alexis Mead. Nice job there by Reed, finding the open shooter for the, for the good look. Great shooter as well. The Lions quickly, again inside, missing on another inside shot there by Brooklyn Jones, clearing. Izzy starts to look out 4-3, no. Now she'll bring it over to the right wing. Going inside, here's Isabella, uh, no good. Gets her own rebound, she's gonna have enough room or not. And she goes hard to the floor. Three on two break. The Greenwood Christian crowd did not like that. A lot no, of contact. they did not. Lions with it. 
Here's a three on the outside is up and good. And this one was number, who was that? Wagner. Wagner on the shot. Nice shot out front on the wing. All tied again, third tie of the game at eight apiece. Here's a shot from the left corner on a three by Izzy Reed, no good. Odell not there for the rebound. And here comes the Lions on a quick break. Here's another shot from the corner, no good. Pulled down there by Savannah Fry. Got to get it together here. Three minutes remaining here in the first quarter. A lot of bad passes and ball handling mistakes so far, but you can account that to nerves. Savannah Fry driving toward the hoop. Shot in the air, and it rims out. Boy, they're letting him play, Steve. A lot of contact. Kenzie Van Hoy pulls down the rebound. Brooklyn Jones starting to dart her way underneath the basket. Picked up there on the defense by Savannah Fry. Two and a half minutes remaining here in the first quarter. We're all tied at eight apiece. Greenwood Christian came out of the zone. They're now playing man to man. Here we go. 15 foot jumper is up and good. This one by Kalia Fleming. So the Lions now with a two point lead, 10 to eight. There's a shot. Pass of in Basson all the way the other end. Up and good. Wow, it is Fleming on the break and the steal and the turnover by GCA. Cannot telegraph skip passes. 12 to eight now, their biggest lead and another steal. The Lions in the passing lanes doing a great job. Swing it around, here comes another three from way outside, no good. Pulled down by Odell. GCA the other way. Underneath the basket, Bigelow on the miss, pulled down there by, and what have we got? Jump ball. Boy, I tell you what, Steve, a lot of contact down on the post. They're letting them play, and my goodness. So the arrow points to Lagoti. 25 and two on the season and looking for a trip to Bankers Life Fieldhouse, as well as Greenwood Christian Academy. Their first semi-state action in the school history. Here comes another three on side, no good. Rebound underneath there by Savannah Fry. Up court, Ellie Bigelow with it. Burn the number one on the back of her blue and silver. Free throw shot, and it's a Jump shot that goes in by Izzy Reed, and she's going to get to the line. Wow. So that is Izzy's fifth point of the game. So replay on that. That's by the Mead three. Bang. Alexis. Nailed it. One shot coming here for Izzy Reed. Misses on the shot. Now one for three on the afternoon. 12 to 10 lead for Lagoti. Here they go, moving the ball from right to left. And oh. that ball knocked away briefly there by Savannah Fry. Had a hand in there on the defense. Nice movement from Lagoti with the flasher getting to the elbow and then kicking it in the corner. But great catch up defense there by Greenwood Christian to not allow the three point shot. It's like Chelsea Sutton's going to report into the game for the first time for Lagoti. Assistant coach's daughter. Under one minute to play here in the first quarter. The Lions hanging on to a two-point lead right now. Down the lane, Fleming. It's knocked away by Izzy Reed. Two on one break. It's Bigelow up and good. Give the assist to Izzy Reed. Not at 12. Third time of the game, all tied up. It's been a good first quarter, Steve. Back and forth they go. Again, as you said, Sean, a little nerves, I think, here in the opening minutes. It's like they're gonna hold the ball with 21 seconds remaining and hold for a final shot. Brian Smith, head coach for these Lions. Here's Fleming down the lane, shot in the air, and she's gonna get to the line. At Almost. the 1.8 second mark of the first quarter. 7.8, I think that light's blocking it a little bit. Yes, it is. 7.8. Boy, Got the foul there, but man, oh man, she almost took out her own teammate under the basket, <laughs> Steve. Sutton was down there and kind of almost took her knees out. Two shots coming here, first is good. 
That shot, and by the way, that foul was on Izzy Reed. Her first and team foul number two against GCA. Only Second free throw in the air, also good for Fleming, and she has eight points here in the opening quarter. Up court, Bigelow shot in the oh. air, no good. And they'll count it down. You've heard the buzzer just like we have, and we have reached the end of the first quarter with our score. Lagodi 14, GCA 12. Back in a moment on SRN. Life comes at you fast, so it's important to have some help along the way. Ah, my favorite patient. Ah, my favorite patient. When the dust settles, it doesn't always end as anticipated. Embrace the journey and care for the ones around you. My favorite patient. For everything else and every stage in between. My favorite patient. Methodist Sports Medicine is here for you. Did Grandma miss your big game? Subscribe today to our YouTube channel to catch every game. Watch it again on demand. Grandma, huh? Yeah. How about aunts and uncles? Everybody that's not in the region. Well, let's, here's a replay coming up on that last drive by the GCA Cougars. Outlet pass to Miss Bigelow, and she makes it happen. They have lots of numbers there. Once again, three ties in the opening quarter. Right now, the Lions with a slim two-point margin. GCA with the basketball. No changes in the lineup for these Cougars. And we probably won't see very, very many. Nice job there dribbling through that double team. Outside the perimeter, both Fry. Here's a shot from the corner by Ellie Bigelow. It goes out of bounds and awarded to Lagodi. Interesting defensive uh, alignment there for Lagodi with the little kind of trap pressure up there on top with the point person and Greenwood Christian may mimic that a little bit here. It's kind of an interesting story here because I asked GCA today at their luncheon about coming over here, Sean, for a shoot around as well as their practice last night. Very important to get the backdrop of what this looks like for the first time, you know, playing in a first game like this. Oh, what a save. Bounce pass inside again, up and good, this one by number four, that is Jalen Walker who just came into the game. We got a chance to talk to Izzy Reed when they got here for before the game started and she thought the rims were a little uh, stiffer yeah, yeah. Than, they, than they liked. Well, they are pretty soft down at GCA. Here's Alexis from way outside, got it! Oh, Second oh, oh. triple of the game and that'll bring you right back into it. All 16 to 15 now with the Lions in a one point lead. Just underway here in the second quarter. Again, you see, Sean, as they spread it out beyond the perimeter on all four corners with just one player inside. And, and that's Odell's responsibility for they, Greenwood Christian. They keep the ball outside the arc most of the time. Once again, Kalia Fleming running the point for these Lions. Starts to move inside. And she traveled with the basketball. They do call it. Good yep. eyes, huh? Yeah, a little, little stutter step there. And there is a timeout on the floor with our score. Lagoda 16 and Greenwood Christian Academy 15. As I had indicated, Sean, uh, in discussion with some of the players today before the luncheon, uh, they really had to get a very good idea as to what this gymnasium looked like, especially the backdrop for shooting purposes. That's important. When you, when you got a good shooting team like that, you need to get the feel for it get the perception down, especially once fans show up. Well, you know, when I talked to uh, head coach Brian Smith earlier this week, this is like almost a home game for them, only being 20 miles away. They've been here a number of times. That is a, that's a huge benefit for them, but that's also the slippery slope that the IHSA has to deal with when they're signing these uh, semi-state games. There, there's going to be some times when that happens. GCA, just one more hill for them to climb. Greenwood Christian Academy had a big send-off yesterday from school. There were <laughs> so many people there as they loaded the bus, and uh, it was quite a rally call. First time here for the Cougars of Greenwood Christian Academy. And they will bring it up following the timeout. 
Biggest lead of the game for the Lions was at four points. Ball hold held over her head and oh, she wow. slips down. The ball taken right away. Fleming with the basketball up and in. What boy, happened here? Boy, they're letting them play because they literally just knocked her over. Ten points now for Kalia Fleming. And uh, again, pretty good contact there against Savannah Fry. But all you could ask for is consistency, Steve, and they have been that today. Here comes Izzy Reed down the lane. We'll bring it back outside. Bigelow handles right back into Izzy. Double team there. Now toward the basket. Off the glass, no good. And here come the Lions. She's had a tough go of it. They've been roughing her up, but she's still getting after it. Again, you see the perimeter players for these Lions. Fleming continues to handle the point. There she is right there. She's guarded by Bigelow as she moves to her right. Inside, stolen away. Izzy Reed with the basketball on a three on two break. We'll stop, look for help. Here is Alexis from downtown, no good. Rebound underneath there by Jalen Walker. Empty possession, but great job by Izzy Reed intercepting that pass. Three point lead for these Lions of Lagodi High School. Long time participant in the IHSAA. Only 12 years for Greenwood Christian Academy. Here is Izzy Reed all by herself. Can't get it to go. A little bit too far underneath the basket. That's going to be a grab. She dives for it. Contact made, and let's see who this goes against. And they're going to call it on Wagner because she grabbed the left arm of Izzy Reed. Right. As she was trying to get free to get the basketball. Fans don't like it. That's a good call. But the officials were right there to make the call. And the Cougars will inbound underneath their own basket. Triggering as Savannah Fry gives off to Izzy. Here's another three by Alexis. No good. Outside rebound. There is Odell. And a tie-up. And wow. the arrow will point to the Lions. My I goodness. Did, yeah, they must have got together and said, you know what, we're going to let these teams play. Lagodi looks like they're used to playing that style. I've only seen Greenwood Christian once this year. Uh, they're going to have to adjust. Izzy looks like she's ready. Dorothy o Dory O'Dell that time looked like she was ready. They're getting frustrated, but you have to adjust the officials, Steve. Dory O'Dell, pretty brand new to this Greenwood Christian Academy team this year as a sophomore, and she will be in the gym all season if Izzy Reed has something to say about it. <laughs> Good ball movement by the Lions. And here looking outside, starting move toward the basket. No good on the miss by Jalen Walker. Underneath the basket and a whistle called. I think that's gonna be on Sutton. Chelsea Sutton with her first foul of the game and that is team foul number four, Sean. So no one and one at the moment. 18 to 15 if you're just joining us here on Indiana SRN. Lagodi with a three point margin. Izzy Reed working outside, gives it off to Alexis. Now inside they go back to Izzy, can't get it to go. Takes one bounce up and in, and she is blocked there at the rim. Now Bigelow right back to Izzy Reed. To the corner they go, Savannah. Oh. Travel. Savannah Fry moved the pivot put and uh, one too many. It's a great thought. The, the, the shot fake the got her up in the air, but just got to get that ball on the floor first. A bit of a jab step there, unsuccessful, but here comes the Lions with a little over three minutes remaining here in the first half of play. The Lions continuing to stay outside the perimeter. Fleming handles. Now Van Hoy, McKenzie that is. Now inside they go. Reverse layup, up and wow. good. Wow. That one by Chelsea Sutton. And the Lions take a five point lead, their biggest of the game, with 2.48 left here in the first half. She must have put some serious English on that ball. That's for sure, all of those. Dory O'Dell inside, up and good. Dory O'Dell, who they do not count on offensively, so anything they get from her is a Christmas present. Great look again from Izzy Reed, getting her teammates involved when they're open. She had a great game last Saturday night against North Central Farmersburg and scoring eight points. A miss outside on everything. Izzy Reed with the rebound. Quickly up court. 
Ball how knocked is that, away. How is that not a foul? It is. Fleming was all on top of her and nothing called. Other way, up and in. Easy basket. Well, I'll tell you this. One of the things Coach Weems told us is he didn't wear a jacket today because he didn't want to throw it, and I'm sure he probably would have at this point if he was wearing one. Here's Izzy Reed on the drive. No good. Again, trying with that left hand on the scoop. Lions with a five-point lead. Trying to make something big happen here in the final moments of this first half of play. Take a little bit of time now, and they set up the offense. Fleming handles. She drives the basket up, and no good. Gets her own rebound and back outside. Excellent ball movement by these Lions. Once again, Fleming guarded there by Bigelow. No good. Underneath the basket, Odell with a rebound and pulls it away. Says, that's mine. Boy, Izzy Reed could be, get janitor's pay for as much as she's gotten knocked to the floor tonight. Look at, look at the contact inside, Sean. Here's Odell. Shot no good. Rebound by Izzy. And a foul underneath the basket, finally. It's unbelievable the amount of contact. that They're going to have bruises galore after this game. Take a look at this drive by Sutton and watch her get up and under and just flick it up there. I don't know if it hit the board or not, Steve. <laughs> it did not, but it was perfect timing on her part. That's only the second team foul on Lagodi, Steve, and they're both on Wagner. Amazing. One for three at the line is Izzy Reed today. Two shots coming. First one is up and no good. Boy, this is unusual. Coming back into the game for the Lions will be number four, Jalen Walker. Again, we see Walker along with Chelsea Sutton as the primary substi substitutes for Lagodi. And that's been the way the setup has been all season. Second free throw on its way is good. GCA cuts the lead to four at 22 and 18 with just one minute remaining here in the first half of play. It's been a quick first half, that's it, for sure. It has. I have six for Izzy Reed after that free throw, Steve. Lynn Stockton along with Triton Central will follow our game here today. That'll be a doozy as well. Yeah, for sure. Undefeated Triton Central. Going up against one another southern favorites in Linton Stockton. Here we've got one versus eight. There it's one versus four. Walker handling outside. Now gives it to Fleming as she bounces between her legs. Picked up there on the defense by Bigelow. Clock moving with 25 seconds remaining here in the first half. And a four-point lead for Lagodi. Here's Fleming outside. Ooh. Bounced away there by Bigelow. Now moves toward the basket. And another foul going to be called. This one's going to go against Izzy Reed. And uh, some of the similar things that we have seen at the other end <laughs> yeah. of the floor have not happened. It's interesting that that type of contact takes place and the foul is called. Her second, that's the six-team foul, I believe. Here's Fleming at the line where the first shot no good. She has 10 points to lead the Lions here in the opening half. Gives you time, though, to get a shot if you're Greenwood Christian. Second free throw is good. And now GCA will get the basketball with five down and 10 seconds remaining. Look for Meade. Moving with the basketball. Alexis to Bigelow, left side. Now inside they go to Izzy Reed off the glass and gets a nice roll there to make it a three-point margin for the Lagodi Lions at the half. It's the Lions 23 and GCA 20. Back in a moment on Indiana SRN. There's no greater anti-poverty measure than to give a person a job that helps them start to change that trajectory. Morales Group is a full service staffing company that provides temporary labor uh, in the Indianapolis, central Indiana market. It was a challenge that was given by my father. He wanted me to give back much more than I had been. Then I realized that when he said more, he wanted me to see how I could give more. And it wasn't just in money, but in time and in services. And that's how the Morales Group was created. I started off at Morales Group as an intern. I interned for three years before going on full-time staff here. What I love most about Morales Group is that big family aspect. Um, I come from a big family in Mexico, and since the company is continuously growing, I feel like there's always a new member of the family that I get to know. We're willing to give. We're willing to serve others, and we're not expecting something in return. 
come talk to us. We would love to work with you. I think that's right. I have 23. 2-4. Welcome back, everybody, here at Jasper High School in Jasper, Indiana. Thanks for joining us. It's been a pretty good first half, 23-20. Um, not too bad. I mean, we, we, we could see the the nerves, not as high scoring, but I think I think that helps Greenwood Christians, Steve. I think the opportunity now to uh, put this one in the back pocket as far as GCA is concerned and go to the locker room and kind of talk things over. Uh, Alan Weems will have a, gr a good message from him, from them. I, I think the halftime adjustments will be huge. It will be, and uh, with a three-point lead only for Lagoti, GCA is showing a very good showing today. Back in a moment here on Indiana SRN. Lagoti, Indiana, Lagoti Community Schools, we own oh, about an hour and a half south of Indianapolis, 50, 60 miles north of Evansville, kind of in the middle of nowhere, but in the middle of everything. Community of a little less than 3,000 people, about 27, 2,800 people now. Uh, Crane Naval Base is a large employer for our community. Uh, just a small knit, tight community, uh, all working together to make the community as, as strong and as good as we can. And Coach Jack Butcher put Ligoti on the map, you might say, with, with the basketball program. He coached here for 45 years. Well, you know, when Ligoti consolidated back in, in the late 60s, when the public school and the Catholic school both burned and, and, and we came together and, and, and formed uh, the community school, and basketball kind of brought the community together. Coach Butcher uh, led Ligoti to the state finals back in 1970 and 1975, and it kind of started our athletic uh, success, if you will. The other programs wanted to follow that, wanted to be successful also. The community got behind the basketball program 100%. You know, our, our gym seats more than our town, and uh, it was still full on most game nights, you know, back, back in those days. I think for 1A school, we have something like 113 sectional championships. I think we're, we're tops in the state. Uh, you know, we're known also across the state for our outstanding academics that we have here. Uh, we, we have kids that can leave here with many hours of college credit now. Uh, we've produced some very successful former, uh, former students here. They've led symphonies throughout the United States. We've had professional baseball players. We've had doctors. We've had lawyers. So, uh, and you can't do that unless, you know, your community's behind it. And the support of our athletics and, and our, our academics is amazing. Living in a small town like Ligoti is, you know, I, I love it. I, that's why I moved my family back here. Uh, we wanted our, our children to go to a small school, uh, and I, I like the pace, you know, uh, living in a bigger city, anytime you had to go anywhere, it was 30, 40 minutes, and uh, my parents, uh, as I grew up, we had a lot of family time together, and I just felt like we were missing out on a lot of that just due to the hustle and bustle of a big city. Uh, so I just think we have, we kind of run a gamut and give a lot of opportunities to to all kids you know all kids can learn here and succeed here and I think that's what's special about this town and what's cool about being in a small town like Lagoti is that you like during sports events and stuff the whole town comes together and supports you so I think that's cool uh, I think what's cool about the support of the Lagoti community is that no matter how many people show up to your regular season matches there's always tons and tons of people who come out for tournament time sectional and regional in Lagoti, it's such a small town, so you really get to know everybody around you. You get to build really strong relationships with your teammates and classmates that you wouldn't have, say, if you went to a larger school with a thousand or more students in it. I think that, you know, being an 81 graduate here and, and then decided to get into coaching and education a few years later after graduation, I knew this is where I wanted to come back to. I wanted to give back to my community. I wanted to, to give back to, to the athletic program and give back to kids in the classroom. And it's a community that I'm very proud to call home. Uh, born here, raised here, and will probably my final days will be in, in Lagoti. Uh, it's just a fantastic place to be. It's a fantastic school system, just a fantastic community. 
uh, you know, small town, USA, I, I just, I think it's hard to beat. Never miss a big game by downloading the IHSAA TV app for free on any device. For your iPhone or Apple TV, check the App Store. On your Android or Android TV device, load up the Google Play Store. Have a Roku or Amazon Fire Stick? We have the app for you. Check us out on Facebook Live, Twitter, or YouTube Live by searching for IHSAA TV. Or as always, click to IHSAATV.org for quick and easy access to your favorite IHSAA live and archived events. Becoming a licensed sports official is a great way to make a positive difference in the community and support the over 160,000 Indiana student-athletes that participate across 22 IHSAA sports. Sports officiating allows you to stay connected to the game, become a role model for our young student-athletes, earn extra money, and support the patrons and communities of our IHSAA member schools. To learn more about becoming a licensed IHSAA official, log on to IHSAA.org slash officials today. Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. Hi, my name is Chris Cross, and for the last six years I have taught elementary at GCA, and I'm currently transitioning into an administrative role. Fourth grade students are often struggling with um, who they are and, and how they relate to others. Being an elementary teacher, I have been able to speak God's truth into the lives of students just in an everyday manner. Uh, just for example of tattling or um, gossiping and, and going into God's Word and saying, how does this Word, God's Word, speak into this relationship? Um, how do we use it? What do we do? And the greatest thing is that I've seen those kids take those pieces of information, put them into practice, and also teach their other fellow students um, out at recess. I've heard them say, well, what do you think God would say about this? And to me, that's the greatest thing that can happen here. Welcome back, everybody, at Jasper High School here in Jasper, Indiana. Glad to have you alongside with us today for this IHSA Girls Basketball Semi-State Championship featuring the Greenwood Christian Academy Cougars up against the top-ranked Lagodi Lions at the half. The Lions with a slim 23-20 to 20 lead. Just a reminder to all of our listeners and viewers to keep up on all the happenings here on Indiana SRM. We invite you to check out our Facebook and Twitter pages at Indiana SRN and see all the latest news and schedules, just go to our website at indianasrn.org. This basket at the end of the half was huge, Steve, to cut the lead down to three. It was at five. Needed a lot of help from the rim, too. Watch this. They, they did. She did. <laughs> a little off the backboard and in. Spinning to her favor. Yes, it brought the uh, Cougars back to within three. Just a couple of... Notes on the scoring summary here in the first half of play for Lagodi leading the way with a team leading 12 points. She was terrific. Kalia Fleming, who really, Sean, runs the offense. Yes, she does, and, and she looks for her spots to drive to the basket and get underneath there. She did get a couple of three-point plays early, but uh, she is a, a very good 
offensive basketball player. No one other of significance as far as scoring is concerned for the Lions, but for GCA leading the way with eight points was Izzy Reed, and uh, Alexis Mead had six on two triples. And the Lions again come up with a turnover as we again play here in the third quarter. It's not the way you want to start the second half on your first possession. Fleming out front, guarded there by L.A. Bigelow, the sophomore guard for GCA. Once again, staying outside the perimeter, keeping GCA on the move. One-on-one, -on -one, it's a man-to-man -man defense for Greenwood Christian Academy. You see Dory Odell coming out to guard Brooklyn Jones, and a collision happened on this side of the floor, and it's going to go against GCA. Bigelow. Bigelow will pick up her first personal foul. Being the sophomore, she is very aggressive. Nobody's in foul trouble, Steve, because they didn't call hardly any fouls in the first From half. From the left corner, shot on the way up and good. All alone, uncontested, and the Lions are making things hard for GCA. Now a five-point lead. Is that Kylie Van Hoy? It was. First basket of the game for Kylie, the sophomore, younger sister of McKenzie. Up court come the Cougars from right to left. Bigelow handles almost at the midpoint there. It goes inside, it's knocked away. Steal once again by Fleming. Two on one break, shot in the air, up and good. They're on the breakaway, Sean. This is making the difficult task for GCA to get back. It's a seven point lead as we just begin play here in the third quarter. And the pressure defense is getting to them. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 160,000 participants here in Indiana who take part in high school sports. Welcome back, everybody, on the defensive end for the Lions of Lagodi on another breakaway on the layup, and it's a seven-point advantage now for Lagodi. Biggest lead of the game. Again, we see the hands of Kalia Fleming out front getting in those passing lanes, Sean, and it's making things difficult for GCA just to get the ball up the court. It is, and I think they like this let him let him play style of the referees it's uh one they like don't miss a game everyone is talking about subscribe to our youtube channel and never miss a game again with pre-game notifications indiana srn where you're always in the game cougars down by seven 27 to 20 inside and a tie up my goodness izzy reed again with a contact and a skip <laughs> on that play, but it's gonna go over to the Lions on a tie-up. On that, she's just gotta shoot it and hope they call for the foul. Exactly. Of course, they haven't all day, so I don't know why they'd start now. Bounce pass left side. Again, the experience is starting to show up here for the Lions. With six minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Miss on everything there on that shot there by Brooklyn Jones. You'll take that shot if you're GCA. I you hope she doesn't hurt you, give, give you a chance to get a possession and get back in this game, get, knock that lead down some. I'm surprised we have not seen more of Mackenzie Van Hoy out on the perimeter as far as a three-point shooter is concerned. She had 21 points. There's a ball almost stolen away. Contact made and head-to-head -head contact there. Bigelow will come to the sideline and uh, talk to her head coach, Alan Weems. And the ball go out of bounds. That Fleming picked up her first foul of the game, Sean. <laughs> I was waiting for a little Roman Reigns suplex there for <laughs> a minute. Team foul number one against the Lions. They have a seven-point lead. Here's a shot inside. This time ah, the no. Lions get caught. They did. She throwing the hip out on Izzy Reed, and they caught her on it. Yep. So Fleming 
Picks up her second in a row. <laughs> and GCA now will get it out underneath their own basket. Triggering is Alexis. Here's Savannah. Was she in and then out? She was not established yet. Again on another turnover and the Lions have an opportunity to up their lead. Five and a half minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Godey looking for an opportunity here. Outside three on the way, up and good. This one by Brooklyn Jones. That one hurt. And the lead goes to 10. GCA with a basketball. Again, they found themselves down by as many as 12 points just a week ago against Jacksonville, coming all the way back from that deficit and then winning by 12 points. A lot of basketball to be played here. Alexis Mee goes inside. Izzy left hand off the glass, no. Rebound under, it goes out of bounds. And give the ball to the Cougars. Yeah, it looked like one of the Van Hoys hit it on the way out. They weren't ready, nice look there. And finally, basket here in the second half by the Cougars, cuts the lead back to eight points. Caught them sleeping. Amen. Here's Mackenzie Van Hoy, number 32. Shot from the right corner by Brooklyn Jones goes in. Boy, got the, got the rim action on that one. Certainly did. Back to a 10 point advantage. Four and a half minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Looking inside for Izzy. Back out front, Savannah for three, no good. And the rebound comes to the Lions. One shot and one shot only, Sean Crow. It is, a great job by Reed finding the open shooter when they double team and they just can't knock him down. Penetration inside, miss on the Fleming shot. Here comes Izzy Reed the other way. She's gonna take it down, now ask for help. Alexis, Mead with it. On the perimeter, here's another steal. This by Fleming once again after the contact. 14 points in the game for Kalia Fleming and it's a 12 point lead. I think that's assault in most states, to be honest with you. Here's Izzy Reed down the lane, up and good. Finally gets through on the cutter there. But again, they, they have to adjust. You have to adjust to the way the referees are calling the basketball game. They're letting every bun play. Yep. So you've got to make that adjustment on your end. And then GCA just isn't doing it. And Fleming came up close to uh, Izzy Reed off the glass. My goodness. The Lions with a big lead. They want a full timeout. With our score, Lagodi 36, Jeringwood Christian Academy 24. Bertner Electric Incorporated has been proudly serving our residential and commercial customers with quality electrical repair for over 33 years. We are fully licensed and insured in electrical wiring and electrician service packages. You'll receive a competitive assessment, whether you're a homeowner or a business owner, first time or long time customer. We offer free estimates for any new project. Call our licensed and experienced electricians today. Outstanding timeout being called by the... Indian SRN is very excited to be a part of the success of this team. As we prepare for the next school year, we humbly ask you to consider supporting us. Every donation, big or small, gets us one step closer to putting another kid on TV for grandma who lives out of state, for viewing parties in Texas, and our troops in the Middle East, all who watch our streams. To help us, simply go to our website at indianasrn.org and hit our donate button. It's just that easy. Thank you for your support. Head coach Brian Smith calling a full timeout after his Lions have taken a 12 point lead. Brian, by the way, is a PE and health teacher at Shoals High School. <laughs> All right. And then he comes right across the bridge to Lagodi to uh, coach this team. So he's a graduate of Indiana State University. 36-24 and once inside. Give it off to number 12. She is the offense for this Cougar team and she's gonna go to the line. You aren't just whistling Dixie there, Steve. They've got six points this quarter, all by Reed. We saw Chloe Greider come into the game for the Cougars and Ellie Bigelow will take a seat. One shot coming now for Izzy Reed. 
She was practicing free throws when she came out from halftime. Yep. Rips that basketball up and good. So this end has been better for her after missing one, two, three in the opening half. Back to a nine point advantage for Lagodi. Fleming, up court, double team. And with the basketball, excuse me, well, that was Wagner. Now back out front, Fleming. Good, good, good ball movement, Sean. Yeah, they've been finding the open open spaces when they had the traps, which helps. Under three minutes to go here in this third quarter of play from the left corner, shot on the way by Wagner, no good. Pulled down there by Savannah Fry. Up court, Izzy for three, way outside, no good. She spotted up, had a good look at it. You gotta follow your shot though. The three girls stayed outside the arc and they gotta go after that rebound. Wagner with the rebound, hands it right to Fleming. Fleming up on top, guarded by Fry. Way out there on the perimeter. Kid coming to the two minute mark and a nine point advantage for Lagodi. Lagodi with only two losses on the season, 25 and two. Fleming down the lane, up and good. Boy, she must have ate her Wheaties this morning or something because she's been unreal today. 16 points on the afternoon for Kalia Fleming. And with an opportunity with a three-point play here to push the lead to 12. You got to get it under double digits if you're GCA by the end of the third. It's, that's paramount. So that is the 17th point unofficially for Kalia Fleming. And a 12-point advantage now for the Lions. Under two minutes to play. Savannah, left hand, no good. Rebound by the Lions. Once again, one shot and one shot only. Fleming across the 10 second line. Last time out, Coach Weems gave them an earful. The referees haven't seen much of a change. Usually, that can cause some trepidation from the stripes. Here's Mackenzie Van Hoor with a left hand up and good. Changes hands and still makes it go. 41-27. Biggest lead of the game. Here's Savannah Fry from outside, no good on the three attempt, pulled down by Mackenzie Van Hoy. One minute exactly remaining here in the third. Wagner down on the corner to Mackenzie Van Hoy. You've got to get a stop here. Kylie Van Hoy been rather quiet today. There's a bounce pass inside and they have to bring it back up on top with 40 seconds left. Here's Fleming down the lane, up and good. Boy, that first step she's got is getting by any point guard that they put on her for GCA. Nice she's getting to the rim. 19 points and a 16 point lead for the Lions. Bounce pass inside, Izzy Reed, no good. Rebound underneath her by Odell, but last touch by the Lions. With 19.9 left, and here comes Ellie Bigelow back into the game for Chloe Greider. You could really use a three right here. Savannah, way outside to Alexis Mead. Mead has been held to just six points here in this game. The lone senior for GCA. Savannah, 15-footer jumper on the way, no good. And once again, the Lions come away with it. Five seconds, four seconds, three seconds. Fleming, half court shot, no good. And we have reached the end of the third quarter with our score. Lagoli 43, Greenwood Christian Academy 27. Life Centers offers love and compassion to all women and men who come through our eight centers. The goal of this love and compassion is that we would not only save babies from abortion, but also transform lives and create families. The forms of this love and compassion are our services. All of our services are offered free of charge to our clients. To learn more about Life Centers, contact us at lifecenters.com or call us at 317-280-2635. Life Centers, we choose compassion. Here on Indiana SRN, thanks for joining us. We would like to hear from you during our game today. So tweet us 
at Indiana SRN and be ready for a shout out. And thanks to all of you for watching. Coming to the final quarter, Sean Carl. A lot of work to be done for this GCA Cougar team, down by 16. You got, you got to have a good first possession. You cannot come out empty-handed right here to start the fourth quarter. Savannah Fry has really been off of her game today with only one bucket. She's averaging about 14 to 15 a game. The junior guard with the basketball right now, double teamed. Wagner, well, here's Alexis from way outside. That's and you can start. count it. Another triple for Alexis, her third of the game. And again, a great look by Izzy Reed. And here comes some trap. Going to have to get a number of steals on the turnover. Shot way outside, misses everything. And an attempted save on the floor there is Savannah. And a reach in and a foul going to go against Lagoti. Watch Alexis look, set up here. Yeah, look at the great pass into to Reed. Finds her open. Good look, set her feet, knocked it down. It's almost a two-handed set shot there, Sean. It is. She has a great control over it. 43 to 30. The biggest lead came at the end of the third quarter of 16 at 43-27. Trying to make a comeback here. And another steal. Hands in the lane again. Isabel Wagner on the steal and the turnover by GCA. Izzy Reed's going to need an ice bath after this game for as yep. much pounding as she's taken. Mackenzie Van Hoy looking help for down here in the right corner. Handling is Wagner. Good defense. Ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Lions as 53-43, the final score in the Class 4A matchup between Lawrence North, who will advance to the state finals with a victory over Bedford, North Lawrence. They're back this year after losing to Hamilton Southeastern last year. Can they get it done? Can the LN Wildcats on the boys' side also make it? Yes. How about that? That would be interesting. GCA with the basketball, six and a half minutes remaining. Ball goes inside and it's knocked out of bounds. And they say it's gonna go off of the hands of Van Hoys, and so the Cougars will get it out. Not sure I like trying to get the basketball down to Reed in a triple team. No. She's getting knocked around, boy, inside. Here is Savannah Fry with a great pass there from Ellie Bigelow. You gotta find people to score to stretch out so you can give Reed some space. 11 point lead, been reduced from that 16 marker. Exactly six minutes remaining. Goes inside, double team, Savannah Fry and a tie up. Knocks her to the floor. They say we can play as physical as you can. That's a great job, the ball kinda came out. Pop loose, she grabbed it, got the jump ball. Savannah. And again, that's the way they've been calling it, so play that game. Coming into the game will be Jalen Walker. Defensive purposes. Oh, oh they my lost her. goodness. Miss on the shot there by Brooklyn Jones, but back outside and they got it. Is that Fleming again? It was Brooklyn Jones. She went back up over the GCA girl and got the rebound. Nine points on the afternoon for Brooklyn Jones and GCA with the basketball. Chloe Greider back into the game. So it's Greider, shot from the right corner, no good for three. So Bigelow stays on the court. And coming up now is a drive to the basket and a foul gonna be called and she'll get to the line. Free throws coming for Kalia Fleming once again. And they just can't stop her. They have no answer for Fleming. Izzy Reed is on the bench, is she not? No, it's Odell that came out, excuse me. First free throw by Fleming is good. That's how I have her as the, her 20th point, Steve. 20 it is, 21 now, as she makes both free throws. The lead goes back to 15. The biggest of the game was at 16 at the end of the third quarter. Greenwood Christian Academy in their first ever school history, entryway into the semi-state. Back-to-back -back sectional titles. And here's Izzy Reed again, contact, huge contact being made there by Jones and the Lions have it. 
Reach in Bigelow, nothing called. Shot from the left corner, no good. Rebound underneath the basket, out of bounds. Last touch there by number four, Jalen Walker. Lessons to be learned from this, Sean Crow. There are, but like you said, they've come back in the fourth quarter of the past couple of games, so it's not over. It was 5.48, Izzy Reed up and good. And look at the reaction of Izzy Reed. Finally getting free under the basket and she'll get to the line. Foul is against Brooklyn Jones. And team foul number five here in the second half against Lagoti. You just gotta get stops on the other end, Steve. Uh, that's, that's the main thing for GCA right now is getting stops. Is he Reed with the basket on the free throw and a three point play and it looks like Greenwood Christian Academy want a timeout. Here's the drive by Izzy Reed as she knifes her way through the defense. Scoop shot off the glass and in. Hello, my name is Sean Kroll and I've been a part of the Indiana SRN family for the last nine years. Last year, we streamed our record 326 sporting events around Central Indiana. All the other guys broadcast basketball and football, but we at Indiana SRN also air volleyball, softball, baseball, and even golf. But we need your help. To continue our mission, please help us by contacting Coach at indianasrn.org. Indian SRN, where you're always in the game. Welcome back everybody here at Jasper High School for this IHSA Girls Basketball Semi-State Championship. Steve McClure along with Sean Kroll and a cast of thousands on the Indiana Sports Network. 4.43 remaining. Looks Lagodi. like we're gonna see a press here, Steve. So the Cougars will come out. Again, the starting lineup back into the game, and here's Fleming driving her way to the basket. Shot in the air, up and good, and once again, she will go to the line. That's not how you wanted your press to work. Nope. Again, the breakaway by Fleming, and she has enough speed and especially the experience to make that thing happen. She has been one terrific young lady today. She had 12 at the half. I think well she's, over 20 now. Yeah, I think she's at 23 with, or 24 with that three point play. Back to a 15 point lead for the Lions. Biggest was at 16. Alexis Mead with the basketball. Gives it off to Chloe Greider, left side. Inside, Izzy, and a foul gonna be called against the Lions. Again, every time that you go inside to Izzy Reed, there are about two or three defenders collapsing. It, it almost looks like you know, the minions, and all of a sudden there's 15 of them down yeah. there because they just suffocate her. That was a second foul against Brooklyn Jones, sixth team foul against the Lions. Ball is stolen away. On the way to the other end, and a foul, and it looks like it is Mackenzie Van Hoy. Wow. That, that wasn't a good foul because she was behind her. If she's going to score, you've got to let her score because you can't stop the ball from getting in the bucket and don't give her an extra shot at another point. So Mackenzie Van Hoy at the line for the Lions. Free throw in the air is nothing but net. And the lead goes to 18. 53-35 with exactly four minutes remaining. Izzy Reed gives it off to Chloe Greider, one of the sophomores on this team. Now to the other sophomore. Ellie Bigolo inside, and they know the ball is coming yeah, in it, there, and the ball is intercepted again. That pass makes no sense, and the shooters are afraid to shoot. If you, you got any space, you got to put the ball up. If you're going to pass it in there, use the bounce pass. Three and a half minutes remaining. GCA with the defense. Fleming outside looking and a good anticipation on the deflection there by Savannah Fry goes out of bounds. Awarded to the Lions. Three and a half minutes away from a trip to Indianapolis. The Lagodi Lions. 
Here's Mackenzie Van Hoy, and you'll give it off to the playmaker. Kalia Fleming outside, who is double teamed, but she gets away from the defense of Bigelow and Izzy Reed, and Izzy will collapse back underneath the paint. Starting to use the clock here, Sean Cole. The clock is your friend if you're Lagodi. Might as well use it to your advantage. Fleming gets away from the defense again, and Bigelow right there at three minutes. Izzy Reed outside trying to get the basketball back. Contact made and a foul. When you've got a ball handle that's got the ball skills and the quickness that Kalia Fleming does, you're going to win a lot of basketball games, and that's showing itself today. 16 foul against the Cougars and personal foul number three against Savannah Fry. As we go under three minutes to play, Kalia Fleming, star of the game today for the Lagodi Lions. She has been the facilitator as well as the scorer, Sean Crow. She has, and that, that is tremendous talent if you can do both of those at the same time. Well, it goes over, over and back, and so uh, one error here, at least in this second half yes. by the Lions, will give the ball back to GCA. Down by 18, the biggest lead of the game for Lagodi. Oh, by the way, yes, sir. Kalia Fleming's a junior. She is a junior, so she'll be coming back. And again, they try to get the ball into Izzy Reed, trying to get it back, and she's going to be called with a foul. Team foul number seven, so we will march to the other end and shoot free throws. Greenwood Christian Academy wants a timeout with our score. Lagoda 53 and GCA 35. What, what do you say if you're Coach Weems right now, Steve? You, did, you just got to maintain the kind of focus that you've had throughout the entire season because they know that even though they're, you know, coming to the end of their season, they know that what's ahead for them in terms of the entire summer and coming back again. We see this team as far as registering a school record, Sean, 23 victories this year. Well, you look at... You combine both these squads, there are four seniors and only one started, and that was Alexis Mead. So this could very well be repeated here next year. Well, again, the Greenwood Christian Academy boys today in the Pioneer Conference Championship game against Class 2A University fell for the first time this year, Sean, at 22-1. and They lost to University by one. That, that, that is going to sting for a while, but you've got to realize there are bigger fish to fry yes, there are. than that. And that game was at GCA, mm -hmm. and uh, they had to, in a hurry, get on a fan bus to come to Jasper. 55-35 with two and a half minutes remaining. Is he Reed with the basketball? Only still a junior on this team. Big things coming for her. Again, two 1,000-point scores for this GCA team in Alexis Mead and Izzy Reed. In fact, Izzy went, there's Bigelow on the shot to the basket up and good. I was getting ready to say that Izzy also recorded her 1,000th rebound this year. I'm telling you what, I told her this before when they, when they showed up. I said, you know, once this basketball season's over, uh, you, you, <laughs> she is absolutely in the running for Miss Basketball next year. I think she needs a trip to Hawaii. How about you? I think she could use that as well. <laughs> Two minutes exactly. Count it down with you. A 17-point advantage for the Lions. Again, with a trip on the line to Indianapolis. All the way from southern Indiana. Here is Fleming once again down the lane. Up and good. And officially 25 points on the afternoon for Kalia Fleming, the junior guard. Cougars with it. Fry. Inside they go to Izzy Reed. Ball gets away. And a foul underneath the basket. This is going to go against Jalen Walker. And the Cougars are in the one and bonus. So it'll be Izzy Reed to the free throw line. Eighteen points on the afternoon for Izzy Reed. First free throw in the air is good. Very successful, an 84% free throw shooter on the season. 
And you can hear the crowd coming alive for Logoti, especially on the student section. Down here at the end of the end zone. We watch Izzy go through her motions, and again, nothing but net. So she has done her job today, and she has been defended by two and three people almost all day long. Here's Fleming driving the basketball. They'll bring it back outside. I don't think that head coach Brian Smith wants them to take another shot. Kalen Walker with it, has it go out of bounds and the Cougars will get it back here. 70 seconds remaining. Let's take a look at Alexis Mee, the lone senior on this team, wearing number 21. Has been a terrific leader for this Cougar team over the last four years. Gonna miss her next year. Here's the three outside by Alexis, no good. Rebound underneath there, pulled down by Mackenzie Van Hoy, and up court they come. And again, the crowd will come to their feet. And I can imagine that GCA will probably pull off of its defense here, as we are under 30 seconds now. Crowd on their feet. Lagodi with a big, big crowd here in support of their Lions. And there she is, Kalia Fleming, who has been just outstanding all day long. With the basketball, comes back outside and handling is Walker. And we will count it down with you. Crowd is really coming alive here. Lagodi just a short 20 miles away from Jasper. And there they are. They are the IHSA girls basketball semi-state champions of class 1A. Head coach Brian Smith and his team celebrate at midcourt. Let's just watch. An emotional Greenwood Christian Academy comes to the sidelines. And in a great show of sportsmanship will come together and congratulate the Lagodi Lions winners today, final of 57 to 40. The Lions today were able to assert themselves in that third quarter of play, outscoring the Cougars 20 to seven. And if you take a look at these GCA Cougars, they're all coming together and especially with Alexis Mead, the lone singer. All right, I'm here with Coach Smith, and Coach, what an absolutely outstanding defensive job today by your squad, shutting down their scores. What, what was your game plan all along? Well, we wanted to double team Reed, number 12, and I thought we did a really good job, especially late on her. And then we wanted to guard 21 pretty tight because she can shoot it. And uh, we just worked on that all week, and we watched about every game they had. So Coach and I did, and we had a really good game plan, I thought, defensively. Kalia Fleming was outstanding today, running the show and scoring. What does she bring to your ball club? Heart, soul, offense, defense. I mean, we put her on read for a while. She did a really good job, but uh, she's just a great player, great player. We'll let you go celebrate. Congratulations. We'll see you at Bankers Live. Back to you, Steve. You see the celebration going on at midcourt as the Brian Lewis, the tournament director for Jasper, who we want to send out a big thank you to for all of their courtesies today, but the fan base coming onto the floor now as they hold that trophy high above their head and prepare themselves for another busy week of basketball on their Lagodi High School campus starting on Monday. And I'm sure the celebration will continue here today as well as through Sunday and back on Monday. I think that Brian Smith will probably give these youngsters a day off on Monday just to perhaps concentrate on their academics back on Monday morning. Again, congratulations to the Lagodi Lions with a 57 to 40 victory today over the GCA Cougars. And also big congratulations go out to head coach Alan Weems and the GCA Cougars who finish off their season with a record of 23 and six. Unofficially on the day, is he Reed, the leader of this Cougar team with 18. Alexis Mead finished with nine. Again, the lone senior on this team, but 
unofficially for the Liberty Lions. It was Kalia Fleming finished with 25 points and she and she alone made so many things happen here, Sean Crawl, that uh, you know th this enabled them to put themselves in a position to not only gain this victory, but really assert themselves in that third quarter. They did a great job with that and I talked to coach about it really quick as I'm trying to catch my breath here. I heard that stampede coming, so I had to get out of the way. Uh, you know, Kalia Fleming was huge for them. Like coach said, they put her on Izzy Reed beginning of the third quarter and that's when GC really had their shot, but they couldn't get shots to fall and the, the pressure kind of got to them and you could see the emotion. Uh, they, know, they know they've got work to do coming back next year. 26 and two now, the Lagodi Lions, their record reads on the win-loss side, and uh, that is their eighth consecutive win, but more importantly, a win here today at Jasper in this IHSA Class 1A semi-state championship is huge because we know where the trail leads, don't we? The, yeah, there's only one stop on this train, and that's Bankers Life Fieldhouse, and they're excited to go there. I'm sure they, uh, they'll leave Lagodi plain empty next week when they head down to Indianapolis. Right. Brian Smith, again in his fifth season, will make a trip to Indianapolis on Monday morning for the coming State Finals Coaches press conference, and we'll be right there to bring it to you as far as the details are concerned. But uh, again, the Lions asserting themselves here in the second half play, 20 to seven in that third quarter, and uh, that really put themselves in a championship mode. It did, they pulled away, and uh, at that point it was all for the taking for the Lagodi Lions. You continue to see on the playing floor, the Lagodi Lions with their student body and fans celebrating this 57 to 40 victory today over the Greenwood Christian Academy Cougars. Stick around now, we have a second game coming up as Triton Central will take on Linton Stockton. And until next time, on behalf of my broadcast partner, Sean Kroll, and the entire SRN sports team, Steve McClure reminding you, he lives for you and for me. Good day, everybody.